Welcome to Gabby's Art Studio. Today we're going to be doing some watercolour painting using indigo blue and Payne's grey. So this is the photo that I took in Norway, which I'm going to show you what I'm going to do next with it. Um, I just took a photocopy of it. I'll just cut it down a little bit so it uh, fits on the page. I'm using my watercolour paper, which is 350 GSM. Um, a pad of it. I find this great stuff for watercolours. It doesn't buckle. Okay, so I'm going to use it as a portrait to start with because what I intend to do is maybe do a little, another one here. They're approximately a postcard size between an, yeah, about an A5 maybe. Okay, so what you do is just work out just on the side here where you want your sort of little photo to be. Just a marker. And then with some low-tack tape, which you can buy from Bunnings or any hardware store, just tape along here, okay. You can even go right down here if you like. We'll do another one so that when you do your second one, you've already got it all taped up. Like so. You're probably wondering, well, why am I taping this up? The reason I'm taping it up is so I actually have a nice crisp edge. And it's great stuff, um, better than masking tape, because of the low tack. It isn't going to tear your paper when you go to lift it off. Okay, so, I mean, it's, mine's not going to be exactly, but it's just an indication, a guide. Right, and while I'm at it, I might do the same for another one. Pop that in there. Just a guide to where I'm going to tape it. So I've got two, and you can do two little paintings quite quickly. Okay, there we go. Okay, so the next step is you have your photo, and with a 2B pencil, you um, colour it. Now this is basically creating a carbon copy um, for yourself. A lot of people are very reluctant to do landscape paintings or drawings because they, uh, you know, they're frightened of, oh, I can't draw. You do not have to know how to draw anything these days. Most artists appropriate, copy, trace, and use a lot of digital technology to create your artwork. And I've had a lot of success teaching students who don't have a lot of confidence in their ability. Um, and it's joyful to watch them create something and you know frame it and exhibit it just from simple photographs that are originals that they've taken. And this is not just with landscapes; it can be with anything. You can do a portrait. You're doing the same thing. I do. Por I do do portraits like this. Um, just to save the drawing aspect and I do also do drawings but that's just a different skill together. So you just cover this quite liberally right across where you can see there's a landscape underneath. Okay Chris pretty hard I'm using a 2B pencil. You might want to go over the top of it. You don't want it too dark because you don't want too much pencil coming through. Okay and then you just sort of place it approximately where you want it. So just about um, I'm going to get some tape and just tap the corners so they don't move while I'm actually transferring the image onto the watercolour paper. Okay. And you can either use a red biro. I wouldn't recommend it. If you've got a canvas, yes, use a red biro. But if you have paper, you don't want indentation because it creates um, an area where you can't actually, the colour won't go through on it when you apply the water. So um, unless you want specifically to look like it, for it to look like a relief. So we have here plenty of areas that we can work with. So just as an indication as to where I'm going to go with this, you start tracing around. Okay, and the reason why I said red biro usually tells younger students is because then you can track where you've been because sometimes you might leave it and then you forget, oh, where have I been? You have to have a look. So this is just a guide for my painting later on. You go like that, like that, like that, back up this side. It doesn't have to be accurate. It's just a guide. 
got some clouds in here. Now these clouds may or may not appear later on depending on how the end product looks like. But again, I'll talk about the painting aspect of it later, which is a little bit more detail. I intend to use uh, mainly one colour and just different tonal variations and values of that particular hue of colour. Um, so it's an inexpensive way of doing little watercolour studies and kind of, kind of fun, I suppose. Okay, and there's some reflections on here that should be probably incorporated. Um, trees, just squiggles, a few twigs so that you know later on if you want to include them, you don't have to include them. The beauty about this is that you can actually, once you paint over the top of it with watercolour, you can actually um, get rid of the pencil once it's dry. Okay, so you do that. Now while you're doing it, I forgot to check it, but you can check it to make sure that it is, just lift one corner to make sure that's coming through. It's actually coming through quite nicely. So it gives you a bit of an idea as to what, you know, you're going to paint later on. So I'll just show you through here. So you can actually see, I'll peel that off. And you can use this several times. So sometimes I might even um, shift it down and do the same painting again. And if I'm not happy with the first painting, I've got another painting that I can actually do. Okay, so just lift it up so you just can have a quick look at um, what it looks like. So it's just lines to indicate where things are. If you want, you, you can go over it really lightly so that you have more of a guide. I, you can bring it right off the edges if you've missed that out or the painting was slightly over if that helps. But that's not really important. It's so that we know where there's a bit of a horizon line, where there's clouds, where the mountain starts, where the reflection starts. So basically, I now have a painting ready to go without having to do too much um, drawing just from original photos um, that I have taken. I've got hundreds of them which are great. It's all my work. So I've got a few other things that I'll show you here. Like this is another one. Um, just using watercolour and exploring colour and that's purely from the imagination just some fun not necessarily you know um, the best piece but it's great just to explore colour and I put it in a little frame um, and these frames are pretty cheap to buy too you can um, so you have these frames here they're either white so you can use them as white or you can use them as black depending on um, the colours that you choose so at the end I'll show you how to do that so you can actually frame your works a little bit smaller or you might decide that this section of your painting looks a little bit better. You don't want the other section of the painting, so that's what you use. Um, and they're white as well, so it's just neutral. Now we're just going to paint a wash over it, and I have two uh, glasses of water. One I will use to wash my brushes, and the other one is used to um, paint with. So in order to get a nice wash, you need some clean water and try and not mix up the two. Often I do, but um, it's easy to change. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply. I'm not going to do the sky because um, where the, the clouds are, they're whitish. I want to retain that. So I would probably leave the paper white and not have any water on it. So I'll just do a quick wash and with um, one of the brushes. Now the brushes that I use are a dome brush, different um, sizes, depending on what I'm doing. So I, um, I think that's a number four, this one here for fine work and about a number six for a little bit more um, larger areas. <clears throat> And then I use a flat brush as well. My favourite are dome brushes. I find flat brushes a little bit harder to work with when it comes to going in and creating details, but they certainly give you a different effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the flat brush aside and use this water here as my wash. Okay, so I'm actually going to start with a little bit of the foreground in here. Just follow the lines as if you're drawing over the top. 
don't be afraid to go over it and you know have water go spill into an area sometimes it creates some unusual effects okay so that's in the foreground here all right so where it's wet what's going to happen is it's going to bleed with color once i apply the color the color i'm actually going to use is a um coton or winsor newton um, Payne's grey which is a great colour I just find it a really good colour indigo blue is great it's a little bit too blue for what I'm trying to achieve and you just need a tiny bit on a plate not too much or you can use an old tile <clears throat> okay and that's a little bit of indigo blue just in case I want to add some blue so as you can see very very small amount Paint. So now I've applied it, have a look, tilt it up, make sure you can see the paper shimmering with the water. Okay, and I can see that maybe that needs just a little bit more water in here. Okay, I'll leave that there. Then I'll use a second brush, so you work with two brushes. This is going to be my dirty muddy water. Um, that's using a number 10 brush. Now you don't need a lot of colour on your brush, so you're best to mix it before on a plate to show you closer up and just let it bleed in. Just let it bleed. Take okay, and if you make a mistake, just, just have some tissue next to you so that you can actually. Um, you know correct it if you absorb it straight away um, it does pick up the paint and it reverts back to almost white unfortunately with watercolor I found that although it's lovely and experimental once the pigment hits the paper it's um, really hard to sort of paint over the top of it but it creates some interesting effects okay as I said it's not going to be exactly the same I might just put that up just as a guide. I don't want it to be the same. I just want to use it as a guide. So you can paint across like so. Okay, so with a dome brush, you can see that I can actually push the tip of the brush into areas. Right. And you do, you work out layers. So at the moment, there's a bit of a pull happening here. If I don't want that, I can actually go in and um, get a piece of tissue or a piece of paper towel. Okay, and I can absorb that area there. Okay, there we go. All right, so, and you can actually create some textures with that later on. All right, so then what I would do is I would wait for that to dry and normally I would work on two paintings. I'm not going to work on two paintings today so that while that's drying, I'd be working on something over here. So when I get my hair dryer, you can buy a little sort of travel hair dryer to do the job and that's so that you're not having to wait for it to dry. So I'll dry that. You can move the paint around like I'm moving it now, let it streak up. It dries up pretty quickly. Now, if you don't want that, you think, okay, well, just take that off. So it has to be really dry before you apply another layer. And it's done in layers. Okay, so once you dry it, you think, oh, that's turned out really quite light. You can apply another layer. You're better off when you're starting as a novice to uh, do it very lightly. Okay. Usually when I teach watercolour to, um, to students, um, they tend to go right into the, the, the deep tone of the pigment, quite dark. Okay. So I would put that brush back into here. I don't suggest you leave your brushes overnight in here because it does damage your bristles. You're better off putting them um, back into their containers. But for the time being, while I'm walking, working on it, it's um, okay in there. Okay, now, I think I'd feel it. It's pretty dry. And I might do, I might decide I'm gonna do the mountain this time. Okay, so I'm painting with clear water. Right, 
So see how it's a bit stained there? I didn't pick it up in time. That's what will happen. Okay, so I'm just going to do that mountain range there. The rest of it's a reflection. Go back to my brush. I often have a towel across my um, knees so that it's... Um, I can wipe my brushes on it. Okay, and I'll go back into the indigo. Check it, see if there's enough water yep there is and you can just place the pigment on and it should start running okay it gives you a nice what we call a feathered edge you can tilt it so if you've got enough water you can actually tilt it and move it round so that it sort of accumulates now that's not going to go anywhere unless it's far too much water then it might drip onto it so it just creates some really interesting um, special effects. Okay, so you might decide you want to just accumulate it a bit along here. You've got to work pretty fast. I'm just, see that's already starting to dry. So if that happens, you may need to go back to your other brush. Just lean that on your plate. Add a little bit more water on this side here. And along there. So essentially the paint only runs into the areas that water, there's water in it. It doesn't go into the other areas. Um, you can do an entire wash where you wash the entire page with a low, um, a very sort of faint uh, Payne's grey colour. Um, but that eliminates all the white. So because we have some clouds in it and I might want to retain those, I'm doing it into in sections, which I think works best. So I can move that around, let the paint do its job. Okay. Like so. even tilt it up a bit and I'm just allowing that paint to run down you can see and then it stops okay so and then you can do the same the other side if you wanted to now if you think oh you just tilt the page and it does its own thing it starts to run back and it creates something really quite interesting. So it's accumulating right in the corner over here. And you might want to just push that out a little bit. All right. Okay. So once again, um, you can play with it. If you think, oh, there's just too much of the same hue in one area, you can shift it around. You might want to use that little bit of paper towel. Tissue's just as good. And just to create a little bit of texture through it. Just in here. Okay, and then again dry. Okay, so that's you're just starting to see some of the textures and the feathering appearing over here. Right in the section over here. Alright, so that goes back in the water. And I might try and wet now that that's dry you must make sure that it's really dry because if it's not dry it'll just uh, turn out really muddy and the painting won't work out but don't worry about that you try, if you're just giving it a go it's just um, you make quite a few mistakes and sometimes things work out and other times I don't it's fine it's just about playing with techniques which is what I'm here to do is just to play experiment explore um, and have fun with the techniques Okay, so put that back in there. Want to dry it on a towel or a tea towel, and then you might want to run um, a little bit of it here. So yeah, there's not a lot of water; it was quite dry already. So put in some colour. I 
I'm just going to run it to the edge. Um, I want to keep some of the white so it's wet but not right at the edge. create some of those lines that you can see in the painting as a reflection. Okay, and you can just um, tilt it and that's running towards it now. You can see it just faintly running towards it. So you don't have a hard edge, but you might want a hard edge. I can work back into it later just to show you. So over here, you can see how it's feathered and then you can get a really fine brush like a number two and just really work some dark areas back into it. So that's just showing it like so. Okay, so that goes back into here. I sometimes get these brushes mixed up. All right, I might just give that a bit of a dry. Okay. With my water brush, I'm gonna go back over it. It's quite dry, feel it again. And this time I'm just going to do, I want to leave, um, if you have a look at the picture, the um, print, there's quite a lot of white in the area which is meant to be reflecting the sky and the clouds. So I might just leave a reasonable amount of white and um, just try and do some greys in it. Let's see how we go. Okay, so again you apply in the areas that you want. So I might do it in dashes. You need to you need to sort of see where it's shiny so that you can apply the paint. Okay, alright. You might just use a smaller brush for this one here. Go back into your painting's grey and uh, do some areas of grey. Mm -hmm. Just use your brush stroke horizontally. The other thing you can do is you can actually get a water bottle and spray as you go so that the, it continues to bleed. Just not soften. We don't want any real hard edges in this. Just want some nice soft edges. Just over here. Okay. So this brush is a number, it's about a number three in this particular style and brand. So they don't always match up. threes look bigger than other ones depending on the brand of brush that you buy. I um, tend, tend to have a variety of brushes. I've got some really nice Japanese and Chinese brushes that work really well for different things. i just pop that in there. So I just want a little bit of white but not too much. Okay I've got a bit of a, a thing happen there. See I can't now I can't get rid of that. That was a little bit of a mistake but that might turn into something interesting later on I'll put a tree there or anyway I can just absorb it see if I can grab it you can actually buy bleach it out but sometimes the bleach doesn't work it um, creates and change creates a different tone value and it creates um, changes in the paper as well okay so I'll just dry that up again go once again now as the mountains recede they should be becoming lighter and lighter I'm only just doing one layer at the moment um, the dark the darkness is really located in the foreground right. I tend to be a bit too precious with it sometimes I think, oh, don't do it too dark but because if you do it too dark, it's really hard to lift the colour off. Now, once this dries, you can actually um, completely dries. 
you can actually rub all the pencil marks. But as you can see, the pencil marks are slowly disappearing. You can't really see it anyway. So it's kind of fun to do. Now, I mean, you can leave it as it is once it's finished, or you might decide to work back into it. Now, I've got a little bit of blue because I think it's picked up a little bit of my indigo somehow. That's all right. Okay, so I've done that other mountain. And if you look at mountain ranges in your photographs, you find that as they get further and further away, um, they're, they're less detail, obviously, and they're lighter. So once again, dry. Okay. Make sure it's dry. I'm going to go do a bit of the sky. The sky's going to be similar to the um the sky. Oh, yeah. a bit wrong there actually so I might dry that off uh, I just had painted over the clouds rather than doing the sky so easy mistake to make I'm just referring back to the um to the image here so if I have a look at that just having a look at where I should paint the water in just so that I can put a little bit of um, sky in there. And there's a little bit in here. quickly so what I might do is actually work back into it all right so I might just go to the paint square but this time I might add just a touch of um, just a touch of indigo mix it up on here as you can see see that's already dried up but it doesn't matter this can be dry and you can not use it for a whole year and then go back to it and you just put some water on it and that's the beauty about these types of paints washes and colors they're just great you just keep using it you don't need a lot of paint it's so um, inexpensive to actually do a little painting um, for yourself it's kind of a lot of fun okay so I'm just gonna put a bit of blue in here you won't be able to see it just to give it some very vari variation in tone we still want to keep it mainly gray um, you can see that's already dry You can push it in with some water. I'm just going to slide there's a little bit of blue in here. So I'm not trying to do it exactly, but okay, and a bit of blue pushing in across here. So sometimes if it's not sitting quite right, just use your brush, both your brushes. And this has already got dirty, so I'm going to have to wash that before I apply the next lot of um, paint. Okay, go back in there. You don't have to be too precious, but it is nice to have it nice and um, clean. Okay, go back into the blue. Maybe put a little blue in here. So the, the indigo is actually quite nice because it's it sort of blends quite beautifully with the um, Payne's Grey as a colour. Like so. Like so. What you don't want is watermarks, which is what I'm getting. Okay, so I'm just going to blend them in and make them a bit fluffy. So they sort of blend into the sky and the clouds. So watermarks means there's lines and you don't want, there's not a lot of lines in there. So you don't actually want that. You want to be able to see the clouds as nice fluffy things rather than things with watermarks on them. So be fairly generous now once I dry this up you probably won't even be able to see it so you might need to go back into it um, we just can leave it doesn't really matter and if it's if you've done if you've done too much and, oh I've gone over a cloud here which I have you can actually use a little bit of paper and just absorb it okay and then just dry that off um, there is a little bit of a, you can see the line here where I've done the sky. I actually don't want that to happen. So it's a bit of trial and error. 
It doesn't matter if it doesn't work. Okay, so I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna leave that for a while. Um, give it a rest and I'm gonna go back to the foreground, which is in here and I'm gonna add a little bit, build up the color now and add a, a little bit more um, structure to it. Going back to Payne's Gray. Okay, I'll just have that here as a guide. Just gonna put some stuff in here. Okay, so it's actually quite dark. Just be really liberal with your brush, don't worry too much. I'm not trying to do an, an exact copy of it, it's not a normal painting. It's just an end, just a guide. And you can keep adding. So the foreground should be quite dark. Now this is all, there were a few sticks in here, so I might just use some of those mistakes that I made and make them into some sort of, you know, stick or tree. using the wrong brush. I do this all the time. Okay, dry it off. This is the clean brush and this is the dirty brush. Before that dries, add some water to it. Push all the pigment across. Okay, you can keep adding lots and lots of layers to this. You're making it really interesting. Okay. a few reeds. Just use the tip of a brush. Don't be too contrived with the with where it is. Sometimes I don't even look at what I'm doing just because I want some really rough easy end of your brush to sort of create the, the roughness that you're looking for. Sometimes it's great to even throw some salt on it and you get some different special effects and I'll show you that on another video which is really cool to do that. Just some techniques that you can use to achieve different results. Um, so you can just, you know, you can do that. You can flick it if you want. Okay, I'm going to go really dark in this area here. So it's just dabbing it on, really. You can use different brushes too, like I've got the fan brushes, and I kind of like them because they sort of sweep. Um, you can sweep some of the the pigment out just to create a bit of a different effect if you want to okay so it's sort of like fine grasses um, but what you don't want to do is do all the same all the way because nature isn't like that it's very sort of um, unpredictable and quite rugged okay so this is looking like a bit of a blob so i might go in it's still wet i might go in and just add a bit more pigment to it just to define it a bit more Okay, like so. Can't see the real definition, but that's okay. Right. So as you can see, there's like twigs and things on here, but it's not clearly defined and that's fine. So I'm just gonna make it up as I go along. Um, I might put some more darkness here. Now this is already starting to dry so what happens when it starts to dry the pigment doesn't move as much but sometimes you want that because you actually want to apply pigment to a particular area and not the rest and other times you like it to flow around and do its own thing. Okay I think that tree is looking kind of um, good so I might just use a tip of it. I could go back and use my other brush that's a little bit more um, smaller but uh, that's why I like the dome brushes because it doesn't really matter what size provided it's really big you can actually um, you know achieve what you want to do so that might be like that you might push some of that out like so as we start thinking oh that looks like a bit of a mess there which it does but that's all right okay so that's quite that's getting darker but it's not as dark as i want it to be um it's in the foreground i might just get my hair dry and just See, it's lightened up, so I can actually do another layer and make it really dark. So what I'll do is I'll just leave it because I haven't decided what I want to do. Okay, 
Okay, I'll go back to the mountain now. I'm going to get added a little bit more um, darkness to that mountain. Um, might use some of the feathering that's already there to create something else, some textures. Okay, brushing off. Indigo might need some more Payne's Grey. See, that's not moving a great deal, so it tells me that it's, it's, it needs a bit more water. And there, whoops. Use the wrong brush again, do that quite often. Okay. Yeah. I don't want it to be as dark as that, so each layer should be getting lighter and lighter. It's a little bit hard to see that on the photo, it's actually not evident but it does look better on the painting when you do that so what I've done there is I've actually applied it on the dry mountain I'm just gonna push some water in it and let it do its own thing okay and as you can see see how it's actually created another feathering there I can't kind of like that sort of a bit of a, a cliffy type of appearance might you use your brush just to brush it down like so okay we don't want it to go in there section okay I actually don't mind that I like that effect at the moment it's it's creating some interesting lines in here I might even um, get a little bit of texture now you can use a, a sponge as well to actually create the um, something a little bit you know just to add different textures and different effects. So this is working quite well in here. And what I might do is I'll go back to some, so I'm just gonna dip my brush in here, picked up some pigment and really accentuate that area there. Bring it down, down, down into here. Okay, I actually want that to happen. Okay. Now you might get some water and you might just, you know, push it in a little bit more, not much. This is drying so as you can see when it's drying it's not moving around as much but sometimes it's good just to go back in if you want to do some darker areas now that's starting to look a little bit dark like this area here so I would go back and make that darker I kind of like that pooling happening at the moment there's something about it that is interesting the white line I try to retain it you can get some masking fluid and mask out a little white line if you wanted to so I'll dry that again, see what happens. There's a little bit of a um, watermark in here, so I might not want that. A little bit too much here. All right, I'm going to go back to, say, this mountain here and increase it. Uh, increase the depth. This one here has picked up a bit of indigo. I must have had it when I first put the first application in. Okay, so that's the mountain in there.
looks a bit better. So I've actually used some of the cloud to create a different type of mountain now. So it just, and uh, put a little bit more darkness down here. So they're bleeding, it's creating some interesting effects. It looks like there's trees in that background and I'm just gonna leave and see what happens. Um, they weren't deliberate, but it's looking quite nice. Okay, now I'm gonna go back. Is there? there. I'm gonna go back to the foreground and start playing with the foreground again. wet it first again this time I'm going to make it quite dark I might leave that one a little bit lighter and really play with the darkness of it I'm starting to think that's really a blob, you know, when you make a bit of a mistake, you think, oh, it doesn't look that great. You know, never mind, I might make it more into a the mountain. Um, play with the existing uh, sort of twigs and things that you've got within the thing. So sometimes the water does its own thing. You don't really want it to do too much other than that okay so I've got it pretty black now what I want to do is I want to actually work with the reflection a little bit more so I might um, go back to the reflection I don't need to dry that off because it's away from the reflection so it's not going to bleed into each other I'm just going to be a bit careful with the reflection um, and we want the reflection similar to the middle ground there perhaps just a touch blurrier just in here and I'd like to retain some of that white line, but we'll wait and see what happens. Okay, so you might do that and that. It doesn't have to be exact, just. What you don't want is um, the lines you want a bit of oh, that's a little bit too dark and that's what can happen when you have too much pigment but then you end up with some really nice effects which is just what's happened along here which is pretty good okay and then you might just sort of want to leave some of that bring it out a bit because that's the reflection So what you might want to do is you might want to go back in and just put some lines in with a lot of water to create a bit of definition between the horizon line and the reflection. Oops. So you've got to be very careful because some of these areas are still a little bit wet. As you can see, those trees have blended in. You can't really see them now. They're just um, little things in the background. But you've, you know, you've created things like these beautiful lines in here that you might do, and then that looks like a bit of a, um, a flat area that you can create. So it's not just a flat mountain, and you can push that up and create a bit of a, a tree or a shrub of some sort just by playing with the shapes that are created just by the water. So the same here. In here, put 
of some pigments and you might want to push them up a little bit like that um, and you might just using a very fine brush you might just play with a little bit of line very very fine line in here right, so there's not a lot of definition in here um, but it is in the middle middle, middle ground, so you can't actually see it. I'm just creating this from my imagination now. I'm not really looking at the actual painting. No, sorry, the photograph. Okay, and so... I'm pretty much, I think, done. Maybe a bit more colour darkness in here. I don't want to go too dark with that mountain in the background because it is meant to be in the background, so it leads your eye to the background otherwise it looks too similar and we don't want to go too dark here so then it looks the same as that so I might just keep it the way it is for now I've got created quite a lot, a lot of watermarks and the watermarks are these little beautiful little lines in here which look really quite creative and nice and I've still got a little bit of whiteness and you can see how important the whiteness is in the actual painting so I might go back and I might just darken that up a little bit just to see what happens uh, okay. All right. And sometimes you just might want to leave it for overnight and think, oh, you can work back into it later on. You think, oh, I think it's a bit dark. You know, I'm going to lift. You, I'm lifting a little bit of paint off it at the moment. Um, but I don't want to lift too much off it, so I'm actually not going to do too much. But see, I'll just indicate here, I've got a little bit too much paint. There we go again, I've confused my brushes, I do that all the time. Okay, so in here I've got, see that? I didn't want that, I wanted that to actually blend so that it's like a soft line. Some of it, so you're sort of working between hard edge line and soft edge line. So for the clouds, I actually essentially want soft edge lines I don't want hard edge lines and it's not easy to achieve sometimes you got to be really play with the water and, and um, experiment and the more you do of these you know the easier it gets to do it's kind of fun I love this sort of painting it's only a small painting um, and it's achievable you can do it you know very quickly and you can use pens and things to work back into it later. You can do whatever you want. Now, I've got a bit of a problem here because it bled a little bit, so I might decide, okay, I'll get my, see what happens. Maybe uh, just bring the mountain up a little bit more here. Oops. Oh dear. Okay. That wasn't a good idea. Okay. No. Like so. Okay, so that's, that's worked out really nice. And, you know, this is a little bit probably needed to be a bit more textured it's a bit contrived yeah. I like these areas where it's bleeding into it's leaving these little these beautiful feathered edges in here as well and then you can go back while it's drying and you can you know really okay I want that area to look as if it's flat so you might decide to either darken it or lighten it, but I'm going to darken it just to create a bit more contrast. Like so. And maybe add some areas in here that are dark. Because this is still wet, it's still bleeding, so I may wait for a little while longer. In here, I might swap my brush to a finer brush. And uh, just do some work in here. It's a little bit, no, it's not going to work, so it might need to be a new piece of paper. Right, so, so now what's happened with my horizon line, it's gone a bit wonky. That's okay. And I don't want, so these lines here I don't want. I want it to blend a bit more, but you've got, you still have to show that, you know, that it's a little bit of a reflection, otherwise it, it looks a bit strange with that so once your water starts to get a bit murky um, it's best to change it 
especially I'm just using one colour, so I'm not fussed over it at the moment. Okay, so I'm going to dry that off and see what happens. Okay. That's the painting. Okay, this doesn't look like the painting, but I never in intended it to look like the painting. I'm just going to tilt it up so you can have a quick look at it. All right. So, and then if I use a little, little frame just to show you, and I can either go like that. So I like to start, oh, I don't like that side of the mountain. I might just go across like that. And then that eliminates the problem I had here as well. Okay, or well, I might decide I kind of like it right there as well. And you can do that. Um, you might be able to cut a different frame. These are just frames that you can buy um, in packs of 10. So, um, or you might decide you don't like any of the twigs and you down the bottom in the foreground, you want to cut most of that out. So you might shift it, you just move it around and you think, oh, what, do, what works really well for me? Do I like it like that? Okay. So you can pick out some really interesting areas. And the other thing is you can actually make a smaller frame by doing that and thinking, okay, well, I quite like doing it like that and taking a photo of it, maybe moving it around and thinking about your composition. Do you want that in the twigs in the middle or do you want to move it across like that? Um, so you can make smaller paintings out of it and then work back into it with a pen. This is the final product of about half an hour to 45 minutes work. Um, it was a lot of fun and I encourage you to just get your brushes and start painting.